How did you actually start your cooking career? I would have to say it started when I was four years old, actually. Um, my, uh, I grew up in a very poor family, and we did not have a lot of extra cooking gadgets like a toaster oven. So when we would make toast in the morning, uh, my mother or my grandmother would make it in the oven itself, like underneath the broiler. At four years old, I was really captivated by the fact that this white bread would go in and it would come out brown. And so I told my grandmother, I want to know how you do that because it's like magic. So that was uh, the first thing that I learned to make. And then uh, very shortly after that, I took an interest in at any time mom or grandma would be in the kitchen. How did you actually get into the MasterChef competition? A bunch of my friends watched the first season of MasterChef. And they were like, oh, no, this is perfect. They focus on the food. They don't focus on the fighting between individuals. And you'll love it. And you, you have to do it because it's perfect for you. And I said, nope, I've sworn off it. I'm not going to do it. So they actually went online to the MasterChef website uh, for casting and filled out an application for me. And then the MasterChef casting people called me the day before they were having their open auditions in Dallas. And they said, we've looked at your application online and we're really interested in you. We'll, we'll give you a VIP spot at our auditions if you'll come. And I was like, what? I did not have fly for MasterChef. <laughs> but they convinced me on the phone to go down. And so I did. And then next thing I knew, I was in LA making the show. How was it? Tell me a little more about how it was to be inside the whole production. You know, it's uh, it's nothing like what it looks like on television. You know, they, they bust us to this dusty warehouse in a really terrible part of L.A. and they had to have like security guards because there was so much crime in the neighborhood. Wow. And the warehouse was filthy. There were uh, rusty nails sticking out of the pieces of the set and you had to be careful where you sat down. And, you know, yeah. I thought looks so different when it comes you know across on the screen uh second of all when you see one episode of the show and there are you know two challenges that take place back to back it actually may take us three or four days to film that one episode so we have to wear the exact same clothes uh, we can't wash the clothes between days because if you get a big stain of tomato sauce you know on your shoulder and then suddenly that disappears in the next scene an audience member is going to wonder what's going on so right. we the exact same clothes from day to day. The girls have to do their makeup and hair the exact same way. Um, another thing that's interesting is uh, when you'll see us cooking, then the camera will pan over to us in a room saying, oh my goodness, I just put my beans in the pot, but they're not done yet, and I've only right. got 30 minutes left. We may film that interview three or four days after the actual challenge took place. What about the relationships inside the group? In the first week or so, tension was very high. I can't handle that kind of stuff because I, I need peace and harmony and love around me at all times. So I actually tried to leave the show at that point and said, you know, really? if people are going to be fighting, uh, I can't deal with this. Because you're sequestered from your friends and family. You cannot call your loved ones, your friends, your family at all while you're making the show. You're completely separated from the outside world for two months. Wow. So the only family that you have are your fellow contestants. Uh, there was one other contestant that was in the same boat as me, and she actually lives here in the same city I do. And we sat everybody down in a circle, and we said, guys, listen, Please. we can either be miserable and hate each other and fight constantly for the next two months, or we can be a family and love and support each other and each encourage each other to do our best in the competition and whoever is the best wins. And from that point on, we were all basically friends. But the dynamic of reality TV show contestants is very strange because – you know, you do all love each other, you spend all your time together, uh, and, and you become very close, but then you get pulled into an interview where, there, where it's just you and the interviewer, and they want you to talk very honestly about what you think about your fellow contestant. So, you know, people have this friend face with every one of their fellow contestants, but then it's a different story. They're a competitor when they go in for their interview. That's how the engine works. The, the person interviewing you is, is trained on getting that kind of information out of you and, and having you talk very candidly about what you think about your fellow contestants. And so tact goes away when you go into the reality TV interview. There is no longer any tact. You're speaking very honestly what you think in a way that you would rarely be that candid to a person's face. After you did the show, did you get any kind of um, proposals like work or for other shows? Uh, Actually, uh, Gordon Ramsay's production company did sign me to a development contract, so they are interested in right. possibly producing a show with me in the future. Uh, so I work with them out in, out in Los Angeles. So there are a lot of opportunities that are coming up, but 
you know, just because you make a show does not mean that it's ever going to air on television. You know, the television world is so bizarre and so complex that, you know, production companies will invest tens of thousands of dollars into the production of a show, and it might not ever make it onto air for a network. Even if the network agrees to buy it, it may not ever even air. How was it to work with people like Gordon Ramsay or Joe Bastianich? You know, you discover that television personalities have their on-camera face and their off-camera face. A little bit shocked that uh, Ramsey and, and Joe and Graham were so different in their off-camera personalities. Well, Graham is pretty much the same when the camera turns off, but Joe, who is known for being this you know, blood-curdlingly cruel judge, is actually very like chill and low-key and relaxed off camera. So he's nothing on camera like he is off camera. He's a totally different person. And, you know, Ramsey has, is famous for having this crazy temper and being a potty mouth and all this kind of stuff on camera. But when the camera turns off, it's like this switch flips and he becomes as nice off camera as he is mean on camera. There's so much you can learn from other cultures, um, food traditions. So how do you yeah. live that? No matter who you are, what your culture, religion, socioeconomic status, disregarding all of that, when it comes time for you to celebrate life and love with the people you care about, whether you are a billionaire living in a palace on the Mediterranean or a Bedouin living in a tent in Egypt, you get into the kitchen and get your hands dirty to cook for the people that you love. And that is how people all around the world celebrate with each other. So cooking is one of the only international languages. It is one of the only things that every human being on this planet shares with every human being.